and welcome to my ever-growing series on patching gigantic polycrells. So the last couple of videos we've looked at how I've been able to use a dope for ribbon controller to generate a voltage that I'm busing all over the system and using to do all kinds of different things. We can see that voltage in the dope for A197 analog meter and as that voltage increases, the rate of our five Corel function generators, that is really the meat and bones of the whole patch, will increase. And some other things will happen as well. So now we're listening to the bass part. And the, um, the bass part isn't on the scope. The scope is showing as our counterpart and our melody. First, we're going to listen to the bass part on its own, and then we'll bring in the melody to have a listen to what it's doing. But as you may recall, the bass is unique in that it uses a little dope for A142 voltage-controlled decay gate, which is essentially just like a voltage-controlled fall stage. And what it does is it uses that voltage controllable dropping gate to choose when it has an open gate that lets it update its note pitch for the sample and hold that it grabs its notes from, from the same quantizer that the melody gets its notes from. So depending on how long that decay lasts, that determines how long the bottom LED, the gate, stays open. The longer it stays open, then the longer the bass voice will hold that one single pitch before its logic allows it to go and grab another pitch. So when I started patching in a rate change using my dope for ribbon, one of the things that I needed to do was to change the way that this whole little sub patch is timed so that I get the kind of behavior that I want from the bass voice. So what I've ended up doing, and I'm just going to drop the voltage now, so you can see it dropping in the VU. Now we've got to the key change. So we're all the way down to about a couple, about a single volt, just over a single volt. And that puts us into our first scale, but it also really slows down all of our Krell functions, including the bass. The bass gets its Krell function from Quadrax channel one. So it's slowing down along with everything else. But you'll see that when it's running slow, I'm using an incoming inverted voltage, and it's that same voltage that's bust around the system from our dope for a ribbon controller. I'm using it to lengthen the decay. And then as I bring that voltage ribbon, voltage um, controller ribbon voltage up, the key will change, the bass voice Krell will start to speed up, and we can see from this top LED that this decay in our decay gate gets shorter. And when it gets shorter, the gate that's open gets shorter, allowing the bass to update its pitches more often. And at the same time that's happening, we've also seen that the voltage, the triangle, uh, triangle voltage, that is patched to our LFO, or rather the triangle voltage that's patched to our U-scale quantizer is also speeding up. So that means that the bass now can choose different notes more often. Now as I continue to increase my voltage over five volts, I'll get to another key change. So now I'm in the top scale that I've got set up. And we can see that the bass is now grabbing notes a lot quicker. And I've tinkered with this quite a bit, and I'll continue to tinker with it, make slight adjustments so that over the range of the dope for ribbon, I'm getting the kind of behavior that I want. So what I really wanted is that as the voltage rises and the whole piece of music gets brighter and faster, I want the bass to be grabbing more notes. And then as it slows down, and I'll slow it down now, so our ribbon is now dropping its voltage, we're under 5 volts, so we've changed keys, 
and then we'll start to see this top LED will last longer prohibiting the base from grabbing another no and now we get to our next key change so now we're in the bottom scale and the krells are moving not quite as slow as they'll go but pretty slow so now I'm going to bring in the melody part and we'll hear the melody interacting with the bass. Now the melody is the red trace on the scope. And I'm going to push it all the way down. Now the, the dope for ribbon is kind of cool in that if you leave it alone and you walk away from it, it's an analog device, its giant capacitor will slowly drain and it will drop its voltage really slowly over time. So if a guy wanted to, you could create a kind of a cool, slow moving piece of Krell music simply by cranking up your dope for ribbon and then sitting down and you know, having a little scotch and the dope for ribbon will drop its voltage and very slowly the whole patch will change around you as its controlling voltage slowly seeps off and drains out of the uh, capacitor. So we can see now we've got it right down to zero volts. So in order to keep it moving even at zero volts, I had to spend a lot of time tuning the whole system so that it would still do something when it got down to this bottom voltage. And now I'm going to start to bring it up. So we can hear that the bass kind of chases the melody pitches around, like it'll eventually catch up to where the melody was at once that gate is released and then the next time it opens it grabs a new note from its own sample and hold but whether or not the bass and the melody are playing the same note isn't just a function of this decay gate it's also a function of the speed of the notes coming out of the quantizer so the slower that the quantizer moves the more likely all the different parts that are sampling it in the system are all going to grab the same note if we want it to be really really random we can have the quantizer racing up and down you know almost at audio rate and a good sample and hold should be able to grab a usable one volt per octave voltage out of there that we can use as a as a pitch but I, I wanted it to be a little bit more musical than that which is why I've been tailoring the voltage to control via the double endore and modulating its speed um, to control the speed of the notes coming out of the quantizer to be kind of just a little bit faster than when all the Krells are updating and then that way they sort of kind of chase the quantizer and you get a sense of up and down um, melodic stuff going on now as I'm increasing the voltage that decay gates getting shorter but at the same time the melody is running faster so they're kind of chasing each other the bass is trying to go move faster so that it can grab some of the melodies notes but at the same time because the melody corral is running faster and it really the at this point the melody corral is the only true todd barton style corral in the whole patch everything else is one of my kind of um kind of off-brand low-budget corrals we can call them uh, from the poor side of the tracks where I've I've untethered the note grabbing portion of the Krell from its Krell voltage and I do this a lot and the reason that I do it is to try to create a sense of musical cohesiveness in terms of the pitches that are being played but I'm still using that kind of very organic morphing swimming around kind of Krell envelope uh, which helps give the piece that very sort of squishy, fluttery quality to it, regardless of what speed it's running at. Now 
Now I'm going to push up our voltage past 5 volts, we get through another key change. And then what we start to hear is that now the negative voltage that's controlling our decay gate is now forcing it to be so short that the base is starting to update much quicker. And this is exactly what I wanted as it creates a kind of a busy, sort of allegro, um, kind of flurry of notes out of it. So really, what I'm hoping that um, watchers will get out of this work that we've been doing is it isn't so much what it is we can get the modular synth to do at any given point we can get it to do all kinds of wild and crazy things but it's about how we control those to create subtle changes over time so that it becomes musically useful and this is where we have to be really careful and use our ears as we'll see headed in to the next few videos there's a lot of parts going on and there's a lot of polyphony in this patch and if we're not careful about how we mix it it is total and complete um, madness and that may be what we want that's really really great to be able to get there but it's also good to be able to tame it and gain some control over how much is going on at one time essentially what i've been building to throughout this whole series was trying to have enough material running and enough material that can be modulated that i can then create a piece of music by bringing in different parts and pieces as i go so as we progress in the video we're going to listen to more of the melodic and harmonic parts that we've got going on and we're going to look at other different ways and different kinds of controllers that we can use to try to tame this beast that we've created well thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it so far please like and subscribe consider joining my patreon to help me make more wacky videos and some more music and we will see you next time. Thank you so much.